are women allowed to correct a man's faulty biblical understanding? Something happened just recently, and I want to not just address just the person, but also want to address all of you as well. Now, make it to be clear, you all understand that I do not, we don't believe on this channel that a woman has the ability or has the right, biblically speaking, to be the head of a church to lead men. We get that part. And so that's not what I'm saying. But I want to make this clear because one of the moderators who is a dear woman in Christ had a question, and I want to make sure that she understands, but also everyone else. The question went like this. Is it okay, as a, let's say in her case, she's a moderator, if a person in the chats is saying something incorrectly or espousing a bad doctor or anything like along those lines, is she allowed to correct that person or does she have to just sit in silence, wait for that some, for some man to come along and to straighten this person out? If a man happens to come along, is she just supposed to sit there or can she offer a passage? Can she make some statements? Can she correct this person? Well, here's the answer. She absolutely can. Now, some people go a little too far, a little too rigid when they when they look at what Paul is saying in 1 Timothy 2, when he says that I do not permit a woman to usurp the authority of a man to teach him as well. So now let's go to the passage. Let's look and see what it says. And you're going to find out that her correcting him is not what Paul meant at all. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, let's start in verse 11. Paul says, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. So is Paul saying that she can't say a word? She has nothing that she can offer that she can say in the church? No, that's not what Paul is saying. Paul is dealing with some issues that happen not really everywhere, but he's speaking here to, to give Timothy a, a, a lesson in how to deal with these with women and men, how to how men ought to behave, how women ought to behave. Let's start in verse 11 and let's get the point that he's trying to make here. He says, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. This, not, this is not to indicate that as she's learning, she has to button her lip up. She can't say a peep. No, he's giving the framework, the spirit of this woman, how she ought to be learning these things, how she ought to be hearing these things. And let's just make this also clear. This also necessarily means that there ought to be an equipped man who can do so. By the way, let's make it clear, all men don't have the right or even the ability to lead or to teach. That also needs to be clear. Just because you have an XY chromosome makeup does not mean that you now are qualified to teach. That's not the case either. God didn't just say that half the population is automatically able to lead, no, or able to teach. That There are still some requirements for them, but setting that aside, let's deal with the women. So it's the spirit that they ought to be listening and learning. Can they ask, can, a, can a woman ask a question in church? Let's say she's a single woman. She has no husband to ask. Can she ask a question? Sure she can. Now let's go to verse 12. And this is the sticky point. In verse 12, it says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. I want to look at this word teach. The word for teach is the word uh, didaskos. Now look at the way this is put together. This word here, didaskain, is the word that we're looking at. This word is a present active. It's an infinitive. What it, what I mean by an infinitive, what an infinitive is, is when we have to something, to walk, to run, to this. So he's saying, I do not permit a woman to, to be in this state of to teach, so to speak. I know it's kind of rough how I'm putting this together, but she that's not, that's not what she does. That's not who she is. All he's saying is, this is not her practice. This is not her responsibility to be in this, this, this framework. This is not her position. This is, she should not be someone who is there to teach. That's why it is in the infinitive. So what the infinitive is going to do is going to describe basically the state that the person's in. It, it, it describes who they are, even though it's verbal, which is what this is. This is a, a verbal infinitive. And so she is not a person who teaches. That's not the state of who she is. Now, can she say anything to correct? She sure can. Can she say anything to guide? She sure can. As a matter of fact, think of the woman at the well in John 4. Jesus is speaking to her and she goes after hearing what Jesus says. She goes to the men in, in her village, her locale, and tells them something. 
Now, granted, this isn't the founding of a church or anything like that or whatever, but still, we see an example of a woman going and giving the good news. Any woman on the planet, if they have a space, time, or opportunity, and someone needs to hear the gospel, they share the gospel. We are all, all of us, men and women, boys and girls, we are supposed to witness, to glorify, to testify of Christ. Can a woman do so? Sure. Now, in this case, if there's someone who is spouting off error and she can give a scripture to say, I don't think so. I disagree. Here's why. She can do so. She's not exerting authority over this person. She's not usurping in anything positionally. She's not being his teacher. She is not in the infinitive to teach with this person. I know I'm usually kind of in a rough way, but she's not doing that. And so to the female moderators on this channel, to the females, period, if a male is in the chat or if a male is espousing out something that he should not do, especially if no one else is able to correct or is trying to correct, then without question you can. Now, you're not taking authority over this person. You do so in the right spirit that Paul is saying. You can, by the way, guys, you can tell someone, inform someone of something in a submissive spirit. By the way, the Bible says that not only should wives submit to their husbands, the Bible teaches that we all should submit to one another. Even though that there's some sort of um, leadership, some sort of hierarchy sometimes, but there is a submissiveness. It's the, the framework, it's the mindset that I'm not saying this because I'm trying to dominate over you. I'm saying this to help you, to inform you, to because we're part of the same body. And if a woman is a part of the same body that the man is, well, then guess what? We are here for one another. If she's part of the body, her responsibility, her use is to edify other parts of the body, not just female parts of the body, but also males. She's not going to function in the role of a pastor, of an elder, of a leader. No, but she still can help. And so this is my understanding. This is how I see it. And if anyone disagrees, I'd love to hear you say why. And then we'll go and point to scriptures of other women in the Bible who may also have done the exact same thing to help someone else out. So I hope this has been helpful for anyone. And again, if you are a lady and someone is in clear air and you've got a scripture that might shed light, well, then by all means do so.